Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, I am going to be cooking up two gorgeous ribeye steaks. These are 100% certified Angus. We're going to cook them sous vide, and then I'm going to finish them off on the Otto Wield Griller. I hope I pronounced that last name correctly. Anyway, let's get going. All right, here are my steaks. Gorgeous, gorgeous ribeyes. Again, certified Angus. We are going to be cooking these sous vide. For those of you who do not know what sous vide is, basically we are going to be vacuum sealing these pieces of meat in a vacuum bag. I'm just going to go very lightly with uh, some herbs, and then we're going to immerse them in water with a sous vide circulator in there. I'll show you that soon. That maintains my target temperature. So let's get going right off the bat by bagging these steaks up. So in the squirt bottle here, I have just a little olive oil. Vacuum bag. Place the steaks in the bag. And I'm just going to put just a little bit of time on both sides of these steaks. This is fresh time. Now me personally, I don't like the salt meats that I'm sous vide in, cooking sous vide. Just, I prefer to get the salt on at the end process. I'll add a little fat before we sear these, get that fresh kosher salt or sea salt on here. I just think it gets a better crust. And quite honestly, the times I have salted these, the meats prior to grilling them when I'm sous vide the meats, I don't even know if that's correct, when I'm cooking them sous vide, it just, it becomes too salty. I think the salt penetrates way too much in the meat. So let me get these guys vacuum sealed. All right, so here's the setup I'm using today. 18 quart tub, and I'm, this is one of my circulators. I have like four different circulators. I've been getting a lot of sous vide requests, so you'll see the other circulators that I own. Anyway, and what I've started using are these sous vide balls, they're called. It's just a little plastic ball, pretty dense. It's not like a ping pong ball. I mean, you cannot squish this thing. And the whole principle behind these things, it, it helps the water heat up quicker and it reduces the evaporation, which it does. I used to use either foil or a lid, and uh, this is a lot easier. You just have to be careful when you're pulling the food out because you don't want to get these balls rolling all over the kitchen floor. So, steak number one, steak number two. Go ahead and immerse these. And I haven't had any bad luck with steaks sinking down to the bottom. Some foods are a little bit more buoyant than others, I think. That's one of the nice things about being under vacuum is they will sink pretty readily, but you can use whatever, spoons to weight them down if they're floating up. Uh, you can also use, I just take those clips, those heavy duty clips like you use for clipping papers together at a, in an office setting, and I'll click, clip those to the edge of the base in here to keep them from moving around. But I haven't had that problem with steaks. I mean, they're pretty stout. They like to sink to the bottom. So I'm going for medium rare, and I have this set for 129 degrees. Medium rare, you know, is usually 130 or so. I like to go sous vide at 129. So here's the principle of sous vide for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Basically, the water is now 129 degrees. The meat is in the vacuum bags, immersed in the water, and so it's cooking now. The cool thing is, it'll never go beyond whatever temperature you set this for. So in this case, 129 degrees Fahrenheit. It will never surpass that. The other cool thing is, is once you take, a, take this out of the water and sear it off, because it's not cooking in an environment right now that's, you know, 350, 400 degrees, like when you're grilling, 
there's no carryover, so it's not going to continue cooking when you take it off. It'll stay at that 129 degrees. The only thing we'll need to do after this is done is just give it a real quick hot sear, and give it that nice crust. So steaks. The rule of thumb is usually 45 minutes to two hours for a steak. I like cooking these nice thick steaks sous vide. And I also like going for that high number. So I will be cooking these for two hours. After two hours, I'll be pulling them off, showing you the next process. Again, very simple, very easy. We'll be going outside and we're gonna be doing a review on that Otto Wild, Wild, sorry Otto, griller. And this thing's pretty amazing, gets to some crazy hot temperatures. And I think it's the perfect tool, having not used it yet, I'll be making that decision when I'm done. But the theory of this thing, I think it'll be perfect for this application for sous vide. Anyway, see you in a bit. Okay, that two hours is over with. Those ribeyes are more than ready to grill off now. However, before we do, I wanna go ahead and show this griller to you. The steaks are safe in that 129 degree jacuzzi inside the kitchen. So as soon as I'm done with this, we'll pull them out, we're gonna grill them off. So anyway, this is the Otto Wield, I think it's Wield, again, help me with that name, griller. And basically what it is, and there's plenty of really good reviews on this, in fact, on their site and on their YouTube channel, I'll have links below, great descriptions on how this thing works. I'm just gonna give you a simple rundown. It's like a salamander in restaurants, basically an overhead broiler that gets really hot. In fact, this thing gets up to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit, which is crazy. Basically, it has two infrared burners on the inside here up above the food. You have an adjustable shelf, shelf adjust with this lever right here. You have a tension knob on the back here to where you can lock it in if you want or just adjust the resistance when you pull this up handle removes and becomes a bottle opener, which will come in handy later. All right, this thing is fueled with liquid propane. I have the bottle right here, a five gallon bottle. To light them up, very simple. Again, you have two separate controls. You're gonna push this knob down, twist it to the light position. You have that red ignition button. You're going to push it, and you're going to hold this knob down for about five seconds or so. We'll do the same on this one. And now it is ready to go. I mean, it just takes a few seconds before this thing to heat up. And I haven't cooked on it. This is actually going to be my first cook, but I have you know, played around with it just to familiarize myself with this uh, unit. So we'll turn it off, just turn the knobs. It's got a cast iron grate. Underneath the grate is a stainless steel drip pan that they in the, suggest in the instructions you fill halfway up with water. Now, in looking at this unit, thinking about how it works, I'm thinking, that's more or less to aid and clean up rather than in, you know putting humidity in the unit and also it probably helps the alum or the uh, stainless steel drip pan from warping so it kind of helps keep it cool now this is a tray that pulls out and it's here to simply protect the surface of whatever you're cooking on whatever the unit is sitting on top of to keep it from you know getting too hot so i think it's a very very well designed unit I'll have a link again to their site down below so you can check it out. Tell me what you think. This whole upper head here removes so you can easily access the inside here to clean it. So now for what we're about to do here, sear off these sous vide steaks, I cannot think of a better system. Normally what I'll do is I'll get my grill really piping hot and sear it off on a hot grill or my hot flat top. But I think this is gonna provide for just a really intense, even heat. It's going to be exciting. Some people use blow torches. I think this will work better than a blowtorch. I mean, again, you have more surface area. So I'm gonna get those steaks. I'm going to remove them from the bags. I pat them dry. I don't just take them out of the bag and put it on the, the uh, grill. I think we, it's important to get rid of that moisture. Now I have a, a little secret that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna show you that I think it makes for a better crust. So I'll be back with those steaks and we're gonna start cooking. All right, so here's what the sous vide steaks look like kind of gray, kind of boring. So again, we're gonna give it that beautiful crust. Now, what I like to use is ghee. And basically <laughs> what this is, it's butter that has been brought up to temperature enough to evaporate out all the water. And then they also remove all the solids. It's really good for things like this. I love searing off meat using ghee. 
and you can actually buy it in the store, buy it in the butter department, it comes in a jar. It's great stuff. Let's brush a little bit on this and it's going to give that really nice buttery flavor to the surface. It's going to help melt the salt and it's just really going to make a killer crust. Kosher salt, coarsely ground kosher salt. Again, this is why I don't like to add the salt in the bag, you know, while I place it in the bag because all this beautiful salt's just going to melt into liquid basically and then enter the meat fibers. That's what you like, do it though. A little pepper. These guys flipped over and you can see how soft and tender these are. Let's fire up the griller and get these things seared off. All right, I'm going to let this kind of preheat just a little bit. It's already blazing. All right, I think it's safe to say we're good to go. I'll show you the second, or I guess it's the third use for this handle here. It's a lifting handle. We'll lift up the cast iron grate. Let's go ahead and get those steaks on. We are cooking. All right, I'm gonna give it a little peek to see where we're at. Look at that, it's looking gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and give these guys a turn. This is crazy, this is amazing. Take a peek. And I think that looks good. What do you guys think? <laughs> Let's give this a flip. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty darn excited about this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give these a turn. I'm noticing that the meat at the back portion of this seems to, seems to be a little hotter there. There's maybe a, just a tad of a cool spot at the very end of this, the opening of this unit here. So let's go ahead and get it back in. And look at that. All right, I think we're ready to try this out. All right, so I gotta tell you, I mean, it looks beautiful. This is such an even crust. Look at that, just beautiful, gorgeous. Juices flowing. Nice thing about sous vide cooking is you don't carry over. So, although I had to do some camera adjustments, so the steak rested just because of that you can literally take it right out of here and throw it right on a plate and you're not going to have the problems you would have with a steak cooked conventionally. Now, I already know what to expect when I cut this open, but for those of you who've never witnessed what sous vide does, you'll be in for a nice pleasant surprise here. It's beautiful, just beautiful. The nice thing about sous vide is you'll see, you don't get that gray halo around. It's just perfectly cooked from top to bottom. I mean, it's just perfection. And when you have a really nice, thick, expensive piece of steak, especially if you're cooking several of these nice, thick, expensive pieces of steak for a group of people, you know, party, you can have this in the water, just chilling out or not really chilling out, I guess, relaxing in the hot jacuzzi. Have fun with your guests, and when you're ready to grill, put on a show. Fire, smoke, then perfect food. Let's give this a try. 
Mm. So again, that ghee, that stuff's awesome. You just buy it at the regular grocery store in the butter just section. And you don't have to worry about the, you know, because their solids are not in there, that all that milk fat or the butter fat, you don't have to worry about the, you know, major flare ups or anything, but you'll still get to enjoy that really great buttery flavor. Mm. All right, guys, it's time for that beer highlight now. And again, I am no expert when it comes to beers. I love a good craft beer. I know what I like, and I'm just sharing my opinion with you guys. So today we are trying the new beer from Ballast Point. It's Red Velvet. There you go. It's usual, very cool labeling from Ballast Point. This is a golden oatmeal stout with beets, chocolate, and natural flavors. I'm sure beets are raising some eyebrows, but if you know anything about legitimate red velvet cake, the color actually comes from red beets. So I'm kind of excited about this one. Now this is a nitro pour and it's saying here, pour with a purpose. So basically tip the bottle upside down and let it pour very quickly. And we'll see how that works out. The auto wield, <laughs> he's gonna kill me if he ever comes to the United States. Handle, lift handle. Also, bottle opener. So let's see how this works. And it worked. Good job, Otto. All right, let's pour this. And I'm going to pour with a purpose like the bottle says, or else they'll yell at me. Here we go. Tip it upside down, it's saying. We'll see what happens. All right, that looks kind of cool. Wow. Looks like a tequila sunrise right now. I did not expect it to be this red. That's kind of a ruby color. It looks pretty darn cool. All right, let's give this a try. You know, it's funny. Uh, it's, I mean, it smells like beer, but I can actually smell like red velvet cake. The head is pretty cool, it's pretty creamy, and I think that's key is pour it the way I just did upside down. Now let's get to the actual beer. I'm actually surprised at how light and almost weak the beer itself is. I mean, I can taste, you know, the chocolate flavors. And then I guess the beets, because there's a kind of an earthy flavor going on there, but it doesn't really taste like I was expecting. I mean, I was expecting that really rich stout and it's not, it's not at all. It's pretty weak. Hardly any carbonation at all. I mean, it tastes like a flat watered down beer. Sorry, Ballast Point. I normally don't say things like that about Ballast Point beers, but it, yeah. I mean, it's not bad, like just actually right now, some hoppy flavors, that bitter flavors starting to kind of come in, but it doesn't really taste like beer. If you don't like beer, try this. You probably will like it. If you like water, try this. Yeah, a little disappointed. I won't be buying this again. It's a bummer. I think if they got a little bit more aggressive with the red velvety stuff, it would probably be better. This is just uh, the beer itself, man, really watery. Kind of a bummer. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Again, I'll have links to this griller down below. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, you know, the manufacturers, I'm sure, will be watching the video, hopefully reading the comments. If, if you have any questions, concerns, whatever, write them down in that comments. It, we, this is how they learn to help the consumer a little bit more. And again, I am, this is not a sponsored video, guys. They did give me this thing. They gave it to me for my opinion on it, to test it out, to play with it. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I had fun with this and I'm interested to see how versatile we can make this thing, to see it's, if it's something that really deserves a place out here amongst my other cookers. So we'll see. Anyway, again, thanks for stopping by. 
make some comments. If you like the video, thumb it up, please. I'll see you on the next one. This is some lame beer, guys. Cheers.